Welcome to Standing Firm Tribulation Radio, broadcasting the truth in the last days, giving commentary to the latest news, encouraging the faithful remnant through God's Word to help you stand firm. This is a worldwide ministry to all of God's children, of which many are currently undergoing intense persecution while others are facing an onslaught of demonic activity, extreme weather, and catastrophic disasters. You're listening to Tribulation Radio. We will be back in less than a minute after Paula Dispro introduces our show with heavenly music in a short music video. Remember to stay tuned for later in the show when Paula sings a different song each week to the glory of God. Stand firm, stand firm. We are safe within God's loving hands. Keep on trusting all His sovereign plans. Stand firm in Him. Stand firm, stand firm. Keep on walking in God's holy ways. He will give His strength to face each day. The name of the show today is the third step to transformation in Christ is love. We have seen in the last article in the series Transformation in Christ that understanding and using our unique spiritual gifts was the second step. Now as God's Word says, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. 1 Corinthians 12.31 Of course, the most excellent way is both a spiritual gift and the fruit of the Spirit, which I am calling our third step to transformation in Christ. This is the gift that opens the floodgates of heaven, because true love comes from God. Let's be clear right in the beginning. We cannot conjure up this love. It either comes from God, or it's not true love. God is love. His greatest desire is to love His creation. In fact, the miracle is He chooses to love others through us. We simply cannot outlove God. Do you really want to feel God's love? Then allow His love to flow through you to others. This is our next step to transformation in Christ. Before that happens, we need to look beyond the mask that others wear. Yes. Everyone wears a mask. We need to look beyond our judgment that's often shaped by an evil world. We need to look beyond the race or the color. When all those lenses are removed and we truly look at the heart of the other individual, something miraculously happens. We actually see them for the first time. We see the precious child inside. Only then can we truly love them or allow God to love them through us. I am compelled to say something good about social media. Well, at least one good thing. People often don't show their most updated photo. Instead, they share a photo of a young, beautiful person, or no photo at all, because they believe others will more readily accept them. Well, that's the way our love works. We must learn to look beyond the rough or aged exterior of the other person. For the world, this is nearly impossible to do. But for those who are being transformed in Christ, we see the miracle of looking beyond the face and the outward behavior to the heart of the other individual. This love is the gift that keeps giving, even in the face of rejection and meanness and hostility. This is not a gushy or worldly kind of love. It's a strong, powerful love that seeks the real needs of others. 
It says, what can we do, O Lord, to really help this other person? What can we do to break down this barrier? It may be hidden, but contrary to what they may say, everyone has a need. Everyone wants to be loved, even if they don't admit it. This true love from heaven passing through us will break down the emotional barriers of previous hurts or regrets. It is good to keep in mind that emotional problems have been known to cause physical problems and bad behavior. We will reach out and touch their heart with the love of God if we start to meet their real needs. Not their felt needs, but their real needs. There's great power in love that keeps on giving without expecting anything in return, which is the definition of true love. It's impossible for the world to keep loving without expecting anything in return. They teach the 50-50 principle, or I will give what I get in return, or I will love you as long as I get something out of it. When we love without ever expecting anything in return, therein is its true power, a power so strong it can transform lives. This is the same love we receive from the Father. It's the same love that He wants to love others with through us. One of the miracles of our transformation is that we feel this great magnitude of His love for us. It's a love that's overflowing like liquid love, covering every square inch of our bodies with tremendously powerful impulses. We simply cannot retain it. We must give it away to others, allowing His love to flow through us to others. Now here is another miracle that I call the perfect triangle of love. As our love flows down from God on one side of the triangle, it then flows horizontally to the others, who then returns the love back to God on the other side of the triangle. Praise God! So if we're not expecting anything in return, what is love? To answer this question in one word, it is self-giving. We learn how to give ourselves to others. Let's say right here, very emphatically, this is not sexual. We must learn to give ourselves to others without the world's definition of love. There is a time and place for sexuality, but not to be covered in our discussion of self-giving love. We can start by asking the question, how can our gifts, talents, abilities, and intellect make up what is lacking in others? How can we best meet their emotional, psychological, and physical needs? Let me be clear, you will never learn their needs while you do all the talking. We must learn to listen, to really listen, and if we do speak, ask some thought out questions that will help them to share their deepest concerns and problems. And then when we finally respond, we learn that we have compassion, not pity, that we demonstrate sincere kindness, not rudeness or being condescending, that we demonstrate true humility, not boasting or prideful, along with many other beautiful traits described in God's holy word. Let's also be clear that true love always tells the truth. It cannot lie in order to make or keep friends. It does not lie to cover up their trespass. With love in our hearts, we feel compelled to speak the truth, even if it momentarily hurts the other person. To point out their trespass and then help them to walk through it by repenting and seeking God's forgiveness is the true measure of love. To overlook their trespass will not help them, and it's not true love. This is especially difficult when they attack you for pointing it out, which is the nature of those living in the world. No one likes to be confronted with their sins. They will not receive it lightly, what you have to say. But if you say it in love with a sincere desire to see them rejoicing in forgiveness from God, and a life free from their bondage of guilt who will help them to receive your love. Remember, God has called us to love one another, which is our true path to transformation in Christ. Finally, 
We cannot say that God is transforming us if we have not allowed His magnificent love to be perfected in us. The Bible says no man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. 1 John 4.12 This love that is being perfected is the epitome of our transformation in Christ. Only those who are being truly transformed and walking in His love for others will have an impact upon the world. As the world grows darker by the day, the light of His love flowing through us will keep the world from being destroyed. All the marching and chanting will not change the darkness. All the Facebook posts and videos will not change the darkness. All the complaining and changing of laws will not change the darkness. Only God's beloved children who are being transformed in Christ, exercising His powerful love for others, will overcome the darkness and bring forth a marvelous light. Amen. Let me conclude by quoting in part from the great chapter of love. We all need to memorize these three little verses in the Bible, allowing God to write them on our hearts. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7 Dear children, please take the next step into transformation by allowing God to love others through you. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Heavenly Father. We pray, Father, that you continue to teach us and show us the power of love. What's really exciting is that this powerful love grows. It's perfected in us as we love others as we should. It's so sad that so many, even among your beloved children, misunderstand the true meaning of self-giving love that keeps giving without expecting anything in return. This is a love that keeps loving even in the face of hateful opposition. Therein is the great power of love to see others drop their defenses, drop their disguises, and receive your magnificent love flowing through us to them. This love has power to help others by breaking down emotional barriers that can have physical consequences. Indeed, O oh Lord, in order to love like this, we must have you dwelling in us, for the world cannot conjure up this kind of love. We praise you, Lord, for entrusting us with your love that can't be kept but must be given away. The more we love, the more powerful it becomes, demonstrating its glorious perfection. We humbly pray this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from the King James Version, the Bible says, No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. 1 John 4.12 We have three great vocalists on today's show, giving wonderful application for the message. Our first vocalist for the day is Lorraine Howard. We are pleased to introduce Lorraine Howard to Tribulation Radio today and share some interesting facts about her God-called ministry. Lorraine started singing at the age of four in her home church, for which she still is a member. Lorraine said that she grew up singing with her family and would spend hours around the old piano. After her marriage to a professional country musician, she said that she developed a deeper love for music, for they traveled regularly to other churches in the area singing in both revivals and on radio programs. In 2007, Lorraine realized that God was calling her to make CDs of her music. And then not much later, she says that God rewarded her with a new gift of songwriting, which she saw as a leap of faith. 
We're pleased to have Lorraine Howard singing regularly on Tribulation Radio and as a featured vocalist on our Tribulation Radio shows. As a wonderful gospel singer, she also sings bluegrass and contemporary music. We're proud to introduce a very beautiful song that was co-written by Danielle Skipper that really gives application to our show today. Now let's listen to Lorraine Howard sing so beautifully, Your Heart and Your Hands. We will be back in less than a minute after a short station break. 
I would like to invite you to visit my online bookstore today for one of these incredible books. Final Warning offers evidence that the beast is already building the global city of Revelation. Stand Firm helps lay a foundation for the Christian soldier to overcome the wiles of the devil. Guiding Principles for Biblical Counseling is a very practical book for the layman and the professional. Revelation Truth is a collection of all my timeless articles written to help God's children stand firm. Our next featured vocalist for today is our own Paula Disbrell singing, Love Lifted Me. On our journey in a war-torn world, every Christian from time to time may feel as if they are sinking in the waters of affliction and the consequences of sin. But for the Christian, it is very short-lived, only the blink of an eye, as God lifts us up with His most powerful love. Now let's listen to the Spirit-filled singing Apollo Dispro singing, Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the waves heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now saved am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to to Him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. Nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Could 
please continue to listen to an important message from God for all of humanity. I never tire of listening to this wonderful message for all of time. We all know that Jesus Christ came to save the sinner and give them a new life in Him. But what many of us have forgotten is the true nature of sin. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what is sin? We will all agree to disobey any of His commandments is sin. But how many can you quote? You might say, if I love God and my fellow man, then I have fulfilled His commandments. But don't forget that He has given us over 127 commands in the New Testament alone to show us how to love God and how to love one another. On our own, we cannot obey. But with God, all things are possible. Not only has He promised to save us, but give us the ability to obey all of His commandments and trust Him alone. This is all by the grace of God, not by works lest any man should boast. This grace comes through faith, believing in Jesus Christ who is the true Son of the living God, who died, was buried, and raised on the third day, opens a door to a new life in Him. This is a life where all of our sins are forgiven and we are made into a brand new creation where old things pass away. From the very first day we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth, producing every manner of spiritual fruit. This eternal life misses the sting of death and ushers us into His glorious presence. This free gift is given to those who are called into His kingdom. Dear friend, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by placing all of your trust in Him to make you into a new creation and forgive you of all your sins, then you can do that right now in the privacy of your own home. Come to Jesus right now confessing and repenting of your sins, telling Him that you believe that He is the Son of the living God and the only path to salvation, asking Him to take full control of your life as Lord. Our third feature vocalist today is Cindy Tilkings Jennings, better known as Songbird Cindy. She will be singing Reflections, a marvelous song that realizes that all of creation reflects God's great love for His children. Let's pray that we too reflect God's love to others. What a tremendously moving song. Now let's listen to Cindy sing Reflections.
Teresa Wiggins has a loving heart for the orphans, the widows, and the poor, and invites you to visit her website and make a tax-deductible donation today for one of these precious children. These are only two of the many hungry and deprived children that could use your help. The little girl and boy are from Uganda, Africa. Make your tax-deductible donation today using the PayPal button. Thank you for your help. Thank you for listening to Tribulation Radio. I pray that God has richly blessed your listening experience. Please help us spread the truth by telling your friends and family about Tribulation Radio. May our God bless and protect you until we meet again. Mm -hmm.